I know 30 seconds of logos isn't terribly long, but there are so many of these f***ers packed in that I can't help but sin it. Well, there it is. The admission that it isn't the length of the logos, only that there are logos in the first place. This prompts the creation of a new cliché. Jeremy hates movie studios cliché. But it's okay, because they hate his ass too. I'm not sure what looks more fake, the Oasis or this over cgi shack stack. It's funny that you would think to call things out that are fake when you laugh like this. <laughs> 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 Are you guys cringing yet? Mission accomplished. I don't doubt that the Oasis gives you a chance to be a pole dancer if you like, or whatever the f*** this is. I just doubt many people engaging in this activity would leave their curtains open. There are a couple issues with this statement. First, when you go inside the Oasis, you aren't immediately thrust into an activity. She would have to have decided to pole dance after entering. She could have been playing a game before that, who knows? Second, most people are in the Oasis themselves, so who's really looking at her in the first place? And lastly, there's nothing inherently embarrassing about pole dancing anyway. Are you trying to imply that Luca, the girl I sent to college, is an unsavory person? You misogynist. I was born in 2027. After giving us a pretty fun unbroken shot, movie serves up a heap and helping of narration. He's kind of been narrating the entire time there, bud. But what would you prefer? That the movie just thrusts you into the story without any background on the characters? I'm fairly certain that you'd attempt to send that, considering the way you need your handheld when you watch movies. You can climb Mount Everest with Batman? Yeah, but I would want to climb Mount Everest as Batman. Who wants to climb a mountain with Batman? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Wade to completely miss the point of this scene. Wade is just giving you an idea of what's possible inside the Oasis. The point is that you can do something you've always wanted to do, like climb Everest, but do it with your favorite comic book character. And you severely underestimate Batman fanboys. Also, my guess for the other choices of climbing partner are Bugs Bunny, Harry Potter, Neo, Godzilla, Richard Kimball, in addition to other WB stars. Yes, that's what killing you means. Oh, sorry, wrong impression. But you knew what I meant. Check out this place. It's a casino the size of a planet. And if there's a section of the movie set there that involves a brief incarceration, a random meeting with a morally ambiguous codebreaker, and an animal escape, you can expect a fan revolt. Jeremy references The Last Jedi. You can expect thumbs down for simply mentioning it because fanboys. Okay, so here's a line to go through some portal, but they're in a virtual world, so why is there a line at all? I can see that there are multiple portals, but why aren't there more stacked end to end so that lines are no longer a thing? Because not every portal is leading to the same activity or location? Even if they were, you'd need an absurd number of portals to accommodate every single person going to all the different locations. Do you even logistic? I know this is a simulation and all, but what the f*** would Freddy Krueger be doing on a planet full of people blasting giant scorpions and sh**? Freddy's out of his depth on this planet, and he's not even in a dream. Jeremy has never heard of Christmas noobs. Gregarious 120! Turn into any giant robot for two minutes. If Wade is reading the description of the artifact, why didn't he read it like it's actually written? He really needed to convert the time units for the sake of exposition. This is a really dumb sin. Look at this number on the screen. Are you telling me that you'd have a problem with people saying 11 and a half instead of 11.5? Because that's essentially what happened here. This would be an orgy of evidence that this is a little girl's room. Except for the fact that I don't think it's an orgy of evidence that it's this little girl's room. Is she putting on a front for her parents? Yeah, I like Donkey Kong Jr., plush toys, and a plethora of girly sh But what I really like to do is pwn noobs on Planet Doom, the most dangerous place in the Oasis. That's the joke. You suck, McBain! <laughs> and oh hey, look, there's Jason, another guy who shouldn't be too tough to kill on this planet. They should have called Planet Doom Warner Brothers Park. Jeremy, the man who reviews movies for a living, thinks Jason Voorhees shouldn't be tough to kill. Also, this is an orgy of evidence that Jeremy has never played Mortal Kombat X. No one has even gotten one key. Some long forgotten gunter cracked the first clue and found the first challenge. But why spend time telling you how that guy cracked the first clue when we can take you straight to the first challenge, filled with even more pop culture references? Hey. That's my line. The only ones still trying are the Gunters. As in, Egg Hunters. Oh, and of course, the Sixers. That's because you've got to trust the process. Jeremy makes a 76ers reference, and those are the worst kind of references. Also, at this point, I think Ben Mendelsohn's played a bad guy in a big-budget movie as many times as Bruce Greenwood's been the president. Yeah, but that's not really a sin of the movie. Unless you're suggesting that Ben doesn't kill it every time, because that's sinful as shit. 
I've got a question about this DeLorean. Aside from the obvious, look at that, it's the DeLorean way it makes an appearance. When you're in the Oasis, does every car have the same speed capabilities, or are they confined to the vehicle's real-world capabilities? If so, a DeLorean could only go from 0 to 60 in roughly 8 seconds and had a top speed of 110 miles an hour, which I imagine sucks in a race like this. So, how is it that your question is a sin? Simply watching the movie answers that question, so you just gave this movie a bullshit sin because you couldn't be bothered to watch the next 5 minutes of screen time showing you that the DeLorean is just as fast, if not faster, than the other vehicles in this scene. The f The last time we saw these assholes a few seconds ago, Artemis was way the hell ahead of Wade, but now they're neck and neck? So does this answer your question about the speed of the DeLorean, or...? Also, this whole race seems to be against the spirit of what Halliday represents. Why would you need to enter this race at scheduled times against tons of opponents? It's a virtual world, so why can't you just do this anytime you want against the AI? And if you manage to win the race, then you open the door for others to copy you and get past the first challenge by doing no work whatsoever. Sometimes I wonder if your brain actually works. The whole point of this race and the other challenges is to find someone worthy enough of inheriting the Oasis. So, having AIs would be counterproductive to the idea of giving everyone a fair shake. Do you not understand the concept of daily events in MMOs? If Parzival's DeLorean has the no roads option, why the hell isn't he flying all over this? Because that wouldn't be fair and this challenge obviously has rules? Hey guys, a last action hero reference. For the win? Jeremy sending a movie for a pop culture reference is almost as stupid as a guy sending CinemaSins using their style. <laughs> Did Kong seriously just peace out after destroying the road? You can see them right here, right? What if they found another way around? Wade's car isn't even damaged. Kong being here at this particular point is part of his programming. He's preventing people from going the wrong way. Favorite restaurant was Chuck E. Cheese. I know Halliday was a nerd, but no person on this earth would put Chuck E. Cheese down as their favorite restaurant, outside of someone who was five. If there are people that like eating glass and crickets and shit, there is definitely someone whose favorite restaurant is Chuck E. Cheese. Besides, Dave and Buster's is just Chuck E. Cheese for adults. I stopped because of Kong. No one ever makes it past Kong. That's like a rule. If Parzival knows this, then why was he so confident when he got close to the finish line? He knew Kong was hot on his trail. Because this is how you play video games. You play them over and over until you figure out how to beat it. Except for roguelikes. F*** roguelikes. Jesus, how many retro bags of Doritos does this family need? One on the fridge, one on the coffee table. Jeremy points out things that are happening on the screen cliche. Wait, is this the virtual reality or is it reality reality? Because if it's the latter, Wade's a superhuman who can take a direct punch to the face without any physical damage to him or his glasses. Or his aunt's boyfriend punches like a bitch. How will you eat up my valuable search time today? Isn't providing information to Gunter's the curator's only job? And it's not like there's anybody else here. So why isn't he ecstatic that Parzival's here to use it? Maybe he's programmed to be the servile snarker, like... Oh, I don't know, every single British servant in media ever? Some things are perfect just the way they are. Asteroids. People don't live inside an asteroid's arcade cabinet. This scene is a perfect example of how easy it is for British actors to do a believable American accent. And because that's not fair, I'm sending these right mic a gift. What you should say is Americans, because unfortunately, Americans attempt to make fun of accents whilst attempting them. Instead of learning the nuances, but American actors are capable of pretty good British accents as well. I mean, Johnny Depp, Robert Downey Jr., Renee Zellweger, The Birdman. I mean, the list goes on and on. Why can't we go backwards for once? Backwards. Really fast. Fast as we can. This is the clue. It's one of the most poured over pieces of video in the Halliday journals, and yet nobody figured it out for five f***ing years. Remember, a whole bunch of assholes have tried that race over and over, knowing King Kong is impossible to get past, and yet nobody thought this go backwards thing was important. So you, Jeremy of CinemaSins, are saying you would have picked up on this clue? <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> we estimate we can sell up to 80% of an individual's visual field before inducing seizures. What the f*** does a company need with 80% advertisements if they win the contest and own the Oasis, which is worth half a goddamn trillion dollars and is a money printing machine? Yeah, greed and whatnot, but you'd lose probably half the people who go to the Oasis. Hope that Coca-Cola revenue is enough to make up for it. Jeremy doesn't understand the irony that he makes YouTube videos. CinemaSins is worth about $4 million. Why do you continue making videos? The same concept applies to billionaires. They're trying to make it to the next level. Also, it's funny how IOI is considered an evil corporation, while Halliday and Morrow are considered saints, even though everything in the Oasis costs money, and they set up a system where it's difficult to compete with richer players. You are aware that you can purchase nearly everything in the Oasis with in-game currency, right? That was the entire point of them showing you what happens when you die, but you skim through it because 
Ew, exposition. X1 haptic boot suit. Parzival shopping in the Oasis, so when he buys something that can only be used in the Oasis, like the holy hand grenade, that makes sense. But you can buy something in the Oasis that you can use in the real world? This entire sequence invalidates your previous sin. Oh, yeah. Orgasm boxing. Hey, man, don't disrespect unbox therapy like that. Discount Thanos. This movie came out before Infinity War, so Thanos is actually a discount Sorrento. Wait, does he have control over everybody's experience at this dance club? Like, I'm grooving to f***ing Daft Punk and some asshole can change it to the Bee Gees? No, because that would be a clusterfuck, as a thing called trolls exist. If that were a thing, you'd hear a constant remix of Never Gonna Give You Up and the national anthem of the internet. Is there seriously no place you can go in this virtual world that isn't safe? Halliday actually built this dance hall and he didn't put any rules about shooting people here? You always gotta be on guard. Welcome to Grand Theft Auto Online. Did you hear what I said? I said I'm in love with you. Jeez, man. The power of bonus will make you forget that you're getting shot at and you could lose all your I guess. All together now, Jeremy says boner. Zemeckis Cube turns everything back in time, 60 seconds. I guess it's got the same Marty McFly logic too, where he didn't give himself enough time to change anything. Also, why doesn't the cube turn back time for him and Artemis? 60 seconds is more than enough time to escape, and it obviously has bubble radius, you dope. Otherwise, it wouldn't work for the user either. Do you really think that anyone's gonna give a damn about an explosion in some ghetto trash rat barn in Columbus? Our villain, who I will reiterate is the worst thing about this story, tells Wade there's an explosion coming a full minute before it explodes, giving him ample time, even if he were in the trailer Sorrento thinks he's in, to get out before it blows. Wait a minute. I thought 60 seconds wasn't enough time to do anything. Now you're placing emphasis on 60 seconds as if that's all the time in the world. Also, this isn't Sorrento giving Wade an opportunity to escape an explosion. He's threatening his family, genius. It's literally in the next line. Don't do this, I'm not even there. Not for long. My real name is Samantha, but yeah, I'm Artemis. I love how they set up Wade to be in love with Artemis and he says, I'd love you even if you're hideous. But then she turns out to be ridiculously hot, so he never has to test that hypothesis. I mean, he technically does. She has a giant scar on her face that you or I obviously don't mind, but Wade's basically your average internet-dwelling gamer. Have you seen the ridiculous things some of these people say about women that would never date them? Yes, Megan Fox has toes for hands, but if she'd let them, they would. I've lived with that my whole life, you don't have to pretend. This just rings plain false. I can understand her not thinking she's attractive because of the large birthmark, but I do not believe for one minute that people treat her all that differently. Are you serious? What kind of bubble world do you live in where people don't treat others differently because of the way they look? The place where the leap wasn't taken. Where the date was. At the movies. Wait, when did everybody decide that they would be teaming up? Wade and Samantha did all this on their own, but then they just call in all the guys they think are trustworthy at the drop of a hat? Why don't the others do any research with them? Dude, H is already friends with Wade, and they established that Daito and Shoto clanned up with the other three Gunters to form High Five, as they were previously unaffiliated with a clan. And it's based on the best-selling book by Stephen King, who hated the movie! Yeah, that doesn't mean he hated his creation. It means he hated Stanley Kubrick's version of it. That's a fudging of the clue, man. This is the movie essentially agreeing with me that the books do matter. The point they're making is that without the book, there wouldn't exist a movie, thereby making the film his creation by proxy. Okay, so now my next question is, how hasn't anyone stumbled across this before and discovered a weird playable version of The Shining yet? It took them five years to even beat the first challenge, and you're seriously asking this question? I've never seen The Shining. Is it really scary? Me, movie. H is a high-level gunter, and Parzival said this movie is one of Halliday's favorites. So how the hell has H not seen it? It's made painfully clear that H doesn't like scary movies, so the real question is why would she have seen it? Halliday's greatest fear wasn't The Shining, or any book or movie. His biggest fear was kissing a girl. That's the leap he couldn't take. I like how this is being shared as new information, when that's exactly why they're here in the first place. Remember this? He had a chance with Kira, he had a chance to kiss her. He didn't take the leap. So let's stop wasting time already. Okay, but this isn't why this is being shared. Yes, they knew he didn't take the leap, but what they didn't know was why he didn't take the leap. The revelation is that kissing a girl was his biggest fear. Dude, you are cinema sins. Do I seriously need to do your job for you? Where is she? Wade plays the pronoun game, which I am sure Halliday was not a fan of, so that Sorrento has to figure out who the hell she is. Seriously? The one character they know is associated with Wade that they kidnapped like two minutes ago? Unlike you, not everyone needs every single thing spelled out to them like they're watching Hooked on Phonics. I felt so proud of myself that I had read a 24-chapter 
But even if you don't think your loyalty employees can see this hatch because of the helmets they wear, why would you even install a hatch that can be open from the inside? Jeremy asks why emergency hatches are a thing. Some have lost their freedom. Some have lost their lives. Damn movie, Daito ain't dead toe in this version. So what's up with the hard foreshadowing? Also, the books don't matter. Referencing the books while also lying to people that they don't matter. Activate the iron giant. Earlier, we saw H on Planet Doom trying to win an artifact that turned her into a giant robot for two minutes. But why did she even try to enter that death match when she was building a fully functional iron giant? Do you even hear yourself sometimes? Building is not the same as built. And in video games where you can lose all your loot, having more than one BFG is the name of the game. Are you willing to zero out for the Oasis? Are you willing to fight? God damn, another young adult adaptation that creates this awesome world but ends up distracted by revolution. Ready Player One could have been the tits, y'all. Yeah, but this isn't a revolution. They're trying to win the game and prevent IOI from winning it. A revolution would be if they were being oppressed inside the Oasis by IOI. While I watch this crazy battle unfold, I'm wondering, what the f*** are they shooting at? There is no army coming at them yet, and there's no more shield, and the only thing they can do now is destroy Halliday's fortress that contains the third key, so what's the plan? This is actually incorrect. There is a ridge that makes it hard to see, but they're shooting at the gigantic army rushing at them in the very next frame that you neglected to show. See? And it's weird they released two Pacific Rim sequels in the same year. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference. I don't even understand how this is possible. Halliday actually allowed, in his simulation, for you to stick charges into the bridge and blow it up? If this place plays like the deathmatch arena it is, then the environment itself shouldn't be damaged, considering how much wear and tear it would undergo every time a deathmatch is played here. Jeremy is a Call of Duty player who has never heard of Battlefield, and that's sinful as sh**. He lost. Not adventure. This guy writes off the correct game being adventure even though the clear rule for the incorrect game is to be sunk into the ice after playing less than one minute. Dude played adventure for, I think it was nine hours? That's what it felt like anyway. I could totally be misremembering this, but the rule is if you beat the wrong game or die, then you fall through the ice. My shoddy memory is much better than you literally watching a film, so I'm going with that. So did IOI play Extraterrestrials, a game created by Skill Screen back in 1983? Or did they play the infamous E.T.? And this is Spielberg's way of acknowledging it and distancing himself from it by spelling it out and making it plural. Why do you ask a question and treat that question as a sin of the film? I know you think you're witty for this reference you obviously googled, but a question is not a sin. Also, it's obviously the former, even though in the book it was E.T. It's pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Really? Let me finish it for you. All the other keys were solo projects, where only one person at a time was allowed at the challenge. But on the last one where you can see what the other person's doing, Halliday said, eh, should be fine to allow a bunch of people to watch. No one's gonna threaten bodily harm to the other. Did you miss that the first trial was a race with hundreds of other cars, or that in the second trial the entire high five were in the ballroom until Artemis took the leap? I'm actually fine he has this extra life thing, but he did practically nothing to earn it. He got it from that Kira guy earlier in the movie, all because he made a bet that Kira was only mentioned once in the entire archive. I bet the book did something different that was a lot more satisfying, but the books don't matter, so onward and upward. In the book, Wade played a perfect game of Pac-Man that granted him the token. If you knew anything about Pac-Man, watching someone play a perfect game is long and arduous. Whether or not that is more satisfying is a matter of opinion, but what is not opinion is that he did do something to earn it, and you just said it, you moron. What a massive troll job from Halliday here. You actually have to reach out and grab the key or else it doesn't count. Your avatars can vacuum up unlimited coins, but a key is too goddamn hard. In a normal situation, reaching for this key wouldn't be hard, dude. It's only hard because his real body is being subjected to actual- Ah, f*** it. This is the moment that Halliday made Moro sign over his shares in Gregarious. Sure, this is another test, but what would happen if Parzival failed? Is he out of the game? Does he still have all three keys? Would he have to go through the whole process again, even though he knows how to beat the levels? I'm just saying this is a totally unnecessary plot twist that doesn't have any bearing on the quest itself. This mirrors the test in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and just like in that movie, it doesn't f***ing matter what happens if they failed the moral test because they didn't. What you are doing here is like if you beat the video game Dark Souls without dying, ha! you then go on to give the game a bad score because it never shows you what happens if you died. You're the curator? Movie reveals Simon Pegg was the curator all along. But does that mean he was in the simulation every day? Tending to every single person who ever walked through there for every waking minute? I hope that shit was by appointment only. Which explains his exasperation every time Wade visited him without recognizing the clues. This also explains the curator becoming more and more helpful and cheerful once they begin figuring everything out. The third thing we did wasn't as popular. We closed the Oasis on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Meaning, people who only used it Tuesdays and Thursdays because those were their only days off from work were f***ed. 
Don't you only release videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the absolute worst days to release videos? Besides, the only people that have Tuesdays and Thursdays off work in retail or the food industry, in which case they're already getting f***ed by big corporations.